All right, hello everyone, welcome to this live stream. I hope that you can all see and hear me okay. Let me know if there's any, absolutely any problems with the uh, audio or the video in this class, and I'll do my best to try and adjust them. Yeah, let me know if there's anything that you'd like me to adjust so that you can hear and see the lesson better. And welcome to uh, today's class. We're going to be discussing uh, some essential jazz rhythms um, in today's class, which are going to help you um, add some more rhythm to your jazz guitar improvisations, really. So just for people um, getting here and settling in, I'm going to play a short little piece to camera. But while I'm doing this, if you could maybe drop me a comment, let me know from, um, that would be fantastic. And I'll do a, I'll do a few shout outs here. Um, as we as we get going in the class, so yeah, just leave a comment. Let me know where you're watching from today, and I'm just going to quickly do a short performance um, here yeah, just to begin with. So I'm going to just reprogram my loop. So forgive me in a second. So I'm just going to yeah have a quick little jam here just while people are getting settled in. Uh, and by the way, when you are watching this, um, I've, this is part of a promotion of a new ebook which I've just released called Beginner jazz improvisation so if you're wanting to um find out more about that then i'll put a link there in the comments that you can check out currently got 40 percent sorry excuse me two seconds currently i've got 40 percent off the ebook all you have to do is use the code 40 and you get 40 percent off the ebook so here we go we're going to have a short little jam and then we're going to get started with the lesson um, like i said if you could leave a comment let me know where you're from that would be uh, fantastic just to let me know so you guys can see and hear me okay so steve uh, hi steve he's tuning in from sunny north yorkshire so here we go short loop of performance just to get everyone and um, while, while everyone starts to settle in here so <laughs> So that was a short little performance over a jazz blues demonstrating some rhythm. So we've had a few more people chime in here. Hello to Barry, who's from New York in the US. Hello to Jim from Houston, Texas. Hello to Campus Star from Tokyo. Um, and then we've got Mike from Nigeria. And then, yeah, Jim said, nice playing, Jim. So thanks very much for the comments, guys. Um, if you have any comments or questions at all throughout this lesson, then just leave them there and I'll do my best to answer them before we finish up um, on the lesson material today. So hopefully you guys have got the PDF of the lesson material um, in. There's a few different um, rhythms which we're going to play through today. Looks like my dog has just come to say a quick um, hello to you guys. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys have got that PDF and you can play along if you like. So we're talking about jazz rhythm today okay so jazz rhythm is a really important part obviously of playing jazz as guitar players we get so into 
scales, uh, chords, and all this stuff that rhythm can sometimes take a bit of a backseat. So I think it's a really good idea to try and focus um, on this, really. So I guess a bit of a trivial question that I will ask um, you guys there that are commenting. If we think about jazz rhythms for one minute, what would you say is the most common jazz subdivision, the most common jazz rhythm that you hear in solos? Is it 16th notes? Is it triplets? What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comment section um, below or on the live chat as we do this video, and I'll try and enter, I'll, I'll try and answer the question if I don't forget to. Okay, so what is the most common rhythm that you hear in jazz solos? All right, so the first rhythm that we're going to talk about is playing quarter notes. Quarter note. Americans call these quarter notes. <laughs> As English guys tend to call them crotchets. Okay, but quarter, I'll, I'll use quarter notes because they're probably more um, American viewers than what there is English viewers. So we'll stick to um, talking about quarter notes. All right, so quarter notes are, are great to use over jazz and improvisation, especially if you're getting used to some changes that you don't know. You can kind of voice lead with quarter notes, really. So what does that mean? Well, you could do a jazz blues like I did there before, and you can kind of think one, two, three, four, and try and think of four notes. So you might get this type of effect. So I'll play it in the higher octave. So. a bit there so so you get the idea you know quarter notes are a really good way to voice lead through chord changes um, initially and yeah it looks like Ian's got it Barry's got it um, oh hi Ian or uh, my uh, Skype student Ian is joined and it looks like um sorry if i'm saying this wrong but is it iago um he's from brazil and he's chiming and saying hello so welcome you guys that have just joined us so yeah swing apes or eighth notes is the most common rhythm that we're going to be talking about in just a minute so ian should be an expert on this we did this in a skype lesson <laughs> a while ago but maybe if you just want to go over the information it might be useful for you ian but he certainly you should be demonstrating this but ian knows this stuff better than what i do uh, great guitar player. Um, hi to Duncan, who's joined in as well. So, um, excuse me for one minute, it's a bit of a windy day here in the UK, and I've got some things there which are being blown around. It's a very hot day as well, so I hope you're all staying safe and it's nice wherever you are. So, Toby has just said that the volume is a little bit low. Um, let me know if anybody else is having um, If the volume is low, just let me know and I'll see if I can adjust that. Or I can just talk a little bit louder. Um, hi to Dom, who's uh, joined as well. So um, let's talk about jazz rhythms then. And, and we're going to begin with quarter notes now. So on the PDF, you'll see that the first rhythm there that I've talked about is a quarter note um, rhythm. And I've applied this to a bebop scale, really. A bebop scale, this lesson itself is not intended to be um, a lesson about the actual harmony here so a few people two people have said the volume is quiet and then two people have said good so <laughs> uh just just keep on letting me know guys and i'll try and do my best to adjust it i don't think there's much i can do um now someone else has said that the volume is low hmm. not sure if there's anything i can do to change this once we're going um here yeah, just bear with me two seconds and i'll see if there's anything that I can quickly do to adjust the volume issue that we've got um, here. Just bear with me two seconds. Yeah, uh, sorry about that, guys. I can see that it does, it seems like it's low. Um, I'll try and sort this one out for the next live stream um, and see what I can do. <laughs> Toby says, don't worry, just my eardrums will burst if there's any window notifications. <laughs> yeah, so sorry about that. I will try and sort this out for the next class. All right, so the first rhythm, then we'll, we'll move on with the lesson. So it's a bebop scale, and we're talking about eighth notes, uh, sorry, quarter notes to begin with. And what a bebop scale is, 
you can take a major scale, just for now we're going to be talking about an F major scale, starting with the F note right here, and you can play an F major scale right there. Now, a bebop scale, if you add any note to this, it then becomes an eight note scale. So currently we've got seven notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now to make that eight notes, you can add, in this example here, I've added the E flat. So I've got F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat. And that gives me an eight note scale altogether. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Why I've done this is if you're practicing a rhythm like quarter notes or eighth notes, that means that you can have a nice cycle as you go through it. So I've got my metronome here on my tablet. So hopefully uh, this isn't going to bust anybody's ears when I put this on. Um, so just bear me two seconds while I get a, my metronome right here just so I can go through this with you guys um, and demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So got my metronome, it's at 110 beats per minute. Hopefully that's not burst anybody's ears. Um, and I can play it now an F bebop scale. And it's like a cyclic exercise because it will always bring me to uh, beat one on the root of the chord. Okay, so I can do this now with eighth notes. I'm going to take the same scale. F B box scale, but I'm going to switch the rhythmic division now to eighth notes. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start with quarter notes first, then go to eighth notes. Quarters. very good for improvising because um yeah someone else was just saying about the volume here so yeah but i'll just continue because i don't think there's much i can do about this now so i do apologize um, for this. i'm going to try and bring the microphone as close as what i possibly can um so yeah if you can if you are comfortable with these rhythms and you know exactly how they sound and you can transcribe them that's what makes a lot of jazz solos sound great you know being able to have a good nice technical flow of using these rhythms. So, so far we've covered quarter notes and eighth notes. Now, the one that's tricky for some people is 16th notes really. So 16th notes means that you basically have four notes in the space of one B. Okay, four notes in the space of one B. So I'm gonna try and demonstrate that now. So forgive me if I mess this up a little bit because <laughs> this is often the most technically demanding. So I'm gonna start with quarter notes then go to eighth notes and then go to sixteenth notes afterwards. Okay, so here we go. Quart Sorry, I don't need my loop, I need my metronome. So 110 beats per minute. Quarters. This, uh, still this issue of things being a little bit quiet, um, which is annoying. Um, sorry about this, guys. I am going to try and deal with this for the next class. Um, it doesn't seem like I can change the mic settings um, as we're going. So thanks for you, those that are bearing with me. I will have this sorted out for next week. Thank you very much for your patience. So, yeah, um, as you can hear there, I was switching between some of the different rhythms and... Um, that's good to do for your technique, right? If you can confidently switch between these rhythms, then that means that you can use them in your improvisation, which I'm going to demonstrate um, in just a sec. So before I do that, there's two more rhythms which I'd like us to go over. And um, these are on the PDF as well. Um, if you scroll down there on the next page, 
they're also from my new book, Intro uh, Beginner Jazz Improvisations. And basically, okay, so Toby um, has asked me about fingering. Okay, so he's asking me fingering for this bebop scale. So just to go over that, um, if anybody else is wondering, I'm starting there with the F on the pinky, then I'm playing the G with the index, then ring on the A, then pinky on B flat, index on C, ring on the D, pinky on E flat, index on E, then um, middle finger on F. Okay, so it's like four, one, three, four, one, three, four, one, two. Okay, so that's the finger in there for you guys that are interested in that. All right, so I'm going to talk now about a different rhythm that you can use, and that is uh, the triplet rhythm, and that's on the BBF2. So basically then with the triplet rhythm, I've gone to a regular F major scale for this, just because of how it's written out. If you want to get this thing where you start with the root at the beginning of the bar every time, we now need to use eighth note triplets, okay? So for this one, I'm going to start on an F, and, and I'm going to go up to the high D note right there. So I'm going to get my metronome again, and I'm going to try and go between uh, over two or eighth note triplets now. So here we go. All right, so that's eighth note triplets, F major scale played with eighth note triplets. The one after that, which I talk about on the PDF, is what's called um, eighth quarter note triplets. Okay, quarter note triplets, and they sound like this. Same scale, F major going to the D, so. that rhythm that is um it's probably the one that people find the most difficult even people tend to find this one more difficult than 16th notes actually and it's the one that um, i'm sure most of you guys that are from a pop or rock background know this riff right the seven nation army so the second variation to that it goes Those three notes are played in quarter note triplets. Okay, so that's an example of that. And then there's also a band called the Arctic Monkeys, and one of their riffs. Kind of hard to play on an arch top, um, but one of their solos from a song called I Bet You Look Good in the Dance Floor uses that rhythm as well. Typically in show tunes, you'll hear this rhythm in chords, and it's like. So it's used there, but it's nice to use in jazz as well too. So once you can play all of these rhythms individually, what I recommend is that you then go and um, try and switch between them. So on the PDF, I've written out a few different etudes. Really, I'll play them both for you with the metronome. So the first one um, is basically is, is basically me switching between quarter notes and eighth notes and uh, yeah, oh yeah, thanks, Barry. Barry said that it's useful to compare these rhythms to common tunes. So, yeah, hopefully you guys will recognize some of these examples. So, the first one that I'm going to play is on the PDF, and it goes between quarter notes to eighth notes, okay? And then the one after goes between eighth notes and sixteenth notes. So, this is changing between these two rhythms. You can make your own up, really. It doesn't really matter, but these are ones that I've written out, especially here. So, once again, I've got my metronome on here at 110 beats per minute. So I'll try and do quarter notes to eighth notes first using the F bebop scale. Remember that you use the bebop scale for the um, divisions of four, quarters, eights, and sixteens, and then you use a typical F major scale going to a D when it's divisions of three, eighth note and quarter note triplets. Okay, so here we go with uh, quarter notes to eighth notes. Mm-hmm. 
right, so that was all the ones that are divisible by four. So quarters, eighths, and sixteenths. So, okay. Picking wise, um, so usually I get asked about picking. You know, you can try and make even the quarter note swing. I like to try and have like a nice. Uh, it should feel good, like jazz rhythm should feel good to play. So it's always useful if you can nod your head and you know tap your foot with ease as well as using the metronome to develop your own sense of time. In terms of the eighth notes, I want to say that I'm mostly alternate picking, but there's probably times where I'm going to the next string and I'm probably using two down or a down and an up just in terms of being economical in my picking. All right. So basically, you know, if I'm doing that, I've, if I'm using eighth notes or sixteenth notes, I want to be as efficient as possible. So guys, when you're doing this, sixteenth notes especially, try and keep your hand really relaxed and try not to tense up. What you don't want is massive gestures with your right hand <laughs> like this. What you want is small gestures with your wrists. Like that, okay. So like I said, all these ex examples are at 110 beats a minute. So if that does seem technically challenging to begin with, drop it down a little bit but not too slow because if you're trying to say do eighth notes or quarter notes at like 80 beats per minute or 70 beats a minute that's really slow and it's probably going to feel like it's really plodding along <laughs> um, so it's, it's going to actually seem more difficult if you practice some of these um, too slow all right however some things like 16th notes sound better at slower tempos because there's more there to kind of you know, keep the excitement going. All right, so what we're going to do now is go and switch to um, how, how to look at some of these in a musical setting. All right, so I always find it's a good idea to um, apply these to a one chord situation first rather than getting bogged down with um, too many chords to begin with. So, excuse me just for a second, I'm just going to switch the backing on my loop pedal here. <coughs> All right, so once you've got a, te a nice technical control um, between these rhythms, then it's good to apply these to chords. And I've just seen that Barry has asked a question, I will answer that question um, in just a minute. If you guys are just joining now, I will say that you can always ask questions and I'll do my best to answer as many of these at the end. I'm just making a note of some of these questions now, which I'll come to at the end of the class. So. The vamp which I've recorded is just an A minor Van Morrison type vamp. That kind of thing. And what's good to do initially is just start with playing scales using a simple rhythm. So you could play really in A minor and then just play with quarter notes like this. Try and do the same thing, but with apes. All right, so you get an idea of how ape notes can sound um, as well. So, sorry, just excuse me one minute. And once you can do that, you can start to try, try and create lines, thinking rhythmically rather than thinking harmonically okay so you can leave space and you can start to think of rhythms so you could do quarter notes space Remember that jazz phrasing is like speaking, really. And you know, you want to have nice pauses and articulation when you're doing this. So you can have one phrase, then pause, one phrase, then pause. Okay, so 
Um, just had a question um, in from Barry, and he's asked um, any thoughts on increasing picking speed. Picking speed. Well, really, just just what I said um, earlier, to be honest, Barry. So if you do it, try and keep your hand nice and relaxed, and then just um, I think that you want to bear in mind that sometimes there's always going to be more economical ways to pick things, really. So hopefully without getting too much on a side note here, say if you were playing something like a C major scale, for example. All right, so if you play that only with downs, that's not going to be very fast. With alternate, it could be pretty fast. But one thing you might want to consider doing, um, especially if you're a little bit more advanced, is thinking, okay, the pick goes down to the first note, up to the second. Now, when it comes down to this note here, um, in, if you were to do if you were to do another down there, you would have to go down, up, and then that lends itself nice to switch in there, then up, down. Now, if you were doing down and down, when you get to the D string here, you'd have to do a two consecutive downs um, in a row. Down, up, down, up, down. Sorry, not two consecutive downs. You'd have to do a, an up um, on this note, but you'd have to bring the plectrum all the way past it, then clip it up on the way up. Okay, which is a bit inefficient when you think if you... What might be a better thing to do would be, as you're going through this, to do two consecutive downs there, because then there's no bringing up to come down again. So you've got this option, or and I think the first one sounds a little bit smoother on the last note. So that's called economy of picking, and that's a good way to increase your speed. Any more questions, you guys can let me know. Thanks for bearing with me for this audio issue. Um, hopefully next week I'll have that sorted out, and thanks for your patience. Um, Last week there was a bit of clipping, this time it's a bit quiet, um, so hopefully by the next live stream I'll have ironed out some of these issues, really. All right, so yeah, back to uh, this improvising. So I was saying that you want to try and think of some space in between the rhythms, okay? So you could think eighth notes and quarters, so space, eighths, space. sometimes can be a little bit more um, challenging and I think that a good way in which you can get into using 16th notes is to take an 8th note idea and then transfer it to 16th notes. So say if your 8th note idea is, okay, so as 8th notes, same idea now in 16th. Sounds a bit strange by itself, but you could be improvising with apes. And then you can throw something in there. It doesn't necessarily have to be a long 16th note phrase, it could be a short melodic idea. It doesn't always have to be a long thing, whereas eighth notes tend to be a bit easier if you can, um, you know, they, they tend to be easy to create longer phrases with. Okay, so um, that's how you can do that. So I'm just going to demonstrate these again. I'm going to try and shift between these three different um, rhythms now. And I'm really just trying to workshop this as much as possible. So don't worry when you're doing it, if you make mistakes or whatever. It's all good. You really just want to try and get these ideas so you can hear and see them okay. Um, and, and don't be too critical to begin with, all right? So even initially, say if you're just working on eighth notes or whatever, like I was demonstrating, if you're just rummaging around A minor, 
that's not necessarily a bad thing. All right, so now let's move on and I'm going to try and see if I can switch between all three rhythmic feels. Okay, so quarters, eighths, and sixteenths. Here we go. So that's kind of um, going through some of that. So now we can move on to the, the triplet subdivisions. Let's check out how they sound. So let's go into eighth note triplet. So. Kind of a tough one to do um, at tempo, uh, doing constant triplets, but it's, it can add some nice variety into your playing. One thing that you can always do with triplets in order to get them in a bit easier is to think of blues language. Blues scales are minor pentatonic stuff. So let's hear how that sounds against the blues. So. So think of triads, they work really well in their triplet subdivision. So let's try that. And by the way, the triads that I'm using here, I'm just thinking really of a G major scale. So I'm thinking of like an A minor triad, a B minor triad, a C triad, and a D triad. Okay, so. So let me try maybe that triad idea, and then I might go into some bluesy triplet ideas. Many blues um, solos and blues phrasing kind of has an underlying triplet feel anyway. So so that's kind of good to bear in mind. So I'm going to try and incorporate some of that over the loop now with some of the triadic ideas as well, um, just so you can hear how that sounds. So here we go. So hopefully there you guys could see that I was just mixing some of that with some of the eighth note things as well. And these are just really different phrasing applications that you can use to kind of get into this style of rhythmic thinking, really. Um, so yeah, Barry just said that the loop there, A minor, B minor, C major. Uh, oh, he's asking a question, what was the loop? So the loop was uh, A minor seven, B minor seven, C, this is like a C69, I guess, C, A, D, and G, and then back to B minor, I think it was. So. That type of thing. All right, and I really recommend starting with this loop if you are new to it. So once you can do that, you can then begin to um, use it over more chord changes and that's what I was demonstrating in the beginning there for you guys that were here then so excuse me one second I changed my loop so yeah the chord progression that I was demonstrating at the beginning was a jazz blues chord progression which I'm probably not going to go over too much detail about that now because I do plan on doing another live stream about a jazz blues and um, so 
there's no point talking about that too much now. So you can take these rhythms and apply the rhythms to jive blues as well. So let's think about some of the things that we've talked about already. So we've got quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, eighth note triplets, sixteenth note triplets, using space. Um, let's maybe try and put that into practice and you can tell me what you guys think. Okay, so I'll probably start with simpler things and then try to add some of the faster phrases as I get more into it. Okay, so here we go. Quarter notes. Eighth notes. some of them can be used over a jazz blues one thing that you can also do is you can take any two five one line that you know and you can double it up as 16th as well i kind of talked about this over the static chord thing but it's a really useful thing to do with jazz language also so for example you could take say if your two five one line is so let's hear how that sounds in the loop so try and do is play the same line in 16th so I've got to play it twice as quick when that part of the progression comes around so that'll sound like this that was a little bit earlier that time let me try it one more time nothing like a live workshop is it guys <laughs> So I was playing the line twice as quick that time to get through the chord change. Okay, so that's a good thing you can do. You could be improvising. And then you can put a double time line to get from the one chord to the four chord um, as well. So that's something you can check out. Okay, so um, like I said, go ahead and back into this jazz blues, you can use triplety blues ideas as well, really, of the entire thing, and hopefully sound pretty good just doing that. So let me maybe give you an example of how you can use triplets and think of a triplet subdivision um, and, and get through the entire chord progression. So here we go. that gives you an idea there um, how, how you can phrase with some of this material so I would suggest if you're new to it just to recap what we've talked about you want to go over the bebop scales and see if you can go between the rhythms so 
take the F B Bob scale, play it first in quarters. get that up to about 120 beats per minute that's kind of like a, a good tempo to try and strive um this 16th material 16th note material up to to be proficient with it if you find a play 16th notes that say a quicker tempo like 200 beats per minute there's not really much point in that because it's very technically demanding so it makes much more sense to kind of have 16th notes so you can use them at medium tunes or slow tunes so for example if you're going to be um, improvising using eighth notes and you're going to be doing something like say an eighth note line um, and you're playing it over rhythm changes or that's all eighth notes so if you're playing over that type of progression and you want to improvise over it then it makes sense to have eighth note ideas now if you take the same and chord progression, you play it slower, so that's a one, six, two, five. I'll do this in the key of C for you guys who don't know that, so just hold on for two seconds. I'm gonna record a fresh loop here and do a one, six, two, five in the key of C. All right, so that will sound like this. It's gonna be a bit quiet, just bear me two seconds. So. Six two five in the key of C, C major seven, A minor seven, D minor, G. This um, tempo sounds much better if you think about sixteenth notes um, at this tempo. So let's kind of give you an idea about this now. right 16th note lines much more useful um, for playing at that tempo rather than at medium tempos and faster tempos certainly it's not going to um, do you any favors thinking about 16th notes over a tune like Cherokee rhythm changes giant steps they're typically played fast um, so it's going to be very difficult to play those sort of um, progressions with 16th notes so really think of eighth notes and quarter notes when you're doing that there so um thank you very much um i've just had one comment saying that was inspiring so thank you very much glad you enjoyed the lesson and enjoying the playing here so that sums up then so just to give one more sum up of all this material so initially you want to start the bebop scale so that you can switch between quarter notes eighth notes 16th notes eighth note triplets and quarter note triplets make sure you can do all those with a bebop scale and then once you've done that take an A minor chord vamp and then start to see if you can switch between them. So if you initially want to start just by playing the scale, you know, up and down over that chord vamp, then that's cool. Now, if you want to go beyond that, um, that's when you can start improvising. So you can start improvising with quarter notes. Think of space, you know, breathing and talking. Make sure you consider that when you're doing that. And then, you know, if you're doing the, the trickier rhythms like triplets, remember that a lot of blues riffs, Kenny Burrell type riffs are often felt in triplets, so that's often a good way in which you can get into some of that phrasing. And then if you think of other things like um, 16th notes, then just have short bursts of 16th notes. Take any phrase that you play as 8th notes and then change it so it's 16th, and that is an easier way of getting some of that into your playing rather than thinking, oh man, I've got to do a 
three by sixteenth note phrase. That's often quite a big kind of thing to do. And then once you can do that, try and add some of these um, rhythms over chord changes as well. So take a chord progression that you're familiar with. I demonstrate the jazz blues in this case. You might want to take like a lead, the rubosa, whatever it may be. Um, then you want to start trying to apply some of these rhythms over that as well. So that would be uh, you know the assignment. If you're a private student, that's what I'll be sharing with you at the end of the lesson um, to work on. Really, I think that one of my Skype students already chimed in earlier on, um, and so he's probably he probably knows all this stuff already. Um, so th that's what I would keep you for one week's worth of assignments. So if you have any comments or questions about any of this, then feel free just to let me know. You can drop me a comment even after the live stream, and I'll do my best to answer it. Really, um, obviously, if you did enjoy this live stream and this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could click the like button. That would help me out and obviously if you subscribe to the channel then you're not going to miss any of the live streams we have these every week and um, basically you can you know you can tune in and you can join me every week at the minute i'm doing them on a thursday at two o'clock gmt if you can't make that you can watch them after really and uh, even if like i said if you can't make them leave me questions and i'll do my best to answer them and then um what was the other thing oh yeah my new ebook if you are interested in looking more into jazz improv and you're fairly new to jazz then my new jazz improv ebook is available and like i said at the beginning there's a discount code which is literally the number 40 four zero. you type that in and you get a 40 percent discount so that might be worth checking out if you're um, interested in taking any of this further but um if not if you're just joining here and enjoying the, the the free live streams and free lessons that's that's cool as well so yeah, thank you all for watching. Thanks for joining. I hope that you're all staying safe and you hope you're staying well and taking care of yourselves. I look forward to hopefully seeing you all in next week's workshop where the sound and audio will be improved. So thanks very much for your patience and your understanding regarding that. I hope that you all stay safe and well and um, I'll see you in next week's live stream. Take care and see you all then.